Hey guys, thank you for tuning in. As you can see, we are not at the store today. We are in my backyard. And as you can see, my plants are still outside and doing good. Today, I really wanna go through really, really quick. I'm gonna try really hard to be really, really quick about bringing your plants in for winter and how you can make this transition as easy as possible on yourself and your plants. First of all, I want to say if you're cold, it does not necessarily mean your plants are cold. And when I'm talking about temperatures, I mean sustained temperatures in those levels. So if there's one night that's dropping to 40 degrees, that's okay. A lot of these guys have been out here in the spring when it bent down to 48 or even 45, I think. Some of them were out when it went out down that low one night. So they can handle one or two nights with those lows. What they can't handle is sustained temperatures in those lows. And we're talking at the very minimum, I would say five days in a row that it's getting in the lows. So the first plants that you wanna bring inside, the first plants that I bring inside are my alocasia, my anthurium, if I kept colocasia and caladium, those would come inside. They don't like to have sustained temperatures below 50 degrees. So again, we're talking five days or more of your lows in the 50s, then they have to come inside. Next ones that come inside are my philodendrons. After that are my monstera, and then uh, what else do I have? Oh, my Hoya. So there's some plants that like actually being cold. So some Hoyas, you know how they get that really pretty colorful sun stress? They actually will cold stress. Same with your bromeliads. Those will get a lot more color if they get a little bit of a nip. Speaking of nips, your orchids. If you want those to rebloom, keep them outside down into the 40s. Orchids, Hoyas, bromeliads, cactus, and succulents are the last that I bring in. And I actually let those sometimes get down a little bit into the low 40s, upper 30s. But for the most part, um, everything is probably in by the time we get sustained lows in the 30s and the 38s and 39s. I have a friend in Long Island and she doesn't bring in her monstera until December. And they're low, they're a zone below us. So I think we're up here at 6A and in Long Island there's 6B. And it does fine. I think hers has even gotten snowed on and it's done fine. So let's talk about how to transition your plants from outdoors to indoors. And it's not rocket science, but there is a secret and the secret is light. Light is the secret. You want to be able to have them go through as less of a shock like it's not the temperature, it's the light that really makes a huge difference in my opinion. So just keep in mind outside, the light is always coming from up above, right? Your sun's up there, your sun's not down there, your sun's not to this side, your sun's always up top and the light's always coming from that direction. So you have to make sure, and this is all year round, if you have your plants indoors, top light. Light's always coming, coming from the top. Plants process their light from the light hitting the surface of their leaves. They don't process it from the bottom of the leaves. So a lot of times people will get these plants and put them in macrame hangers or some sort of hanger in the window and your trailing vines are going to get all that light but not the top of the plant. And then your top of the plant starts to die and you're like, why is this happening? It's because you're not getting light on top of there. So please make sure your plants are getting light on the top. Again, outside the light is completely different than the light inside. You have curtains, you have grimy windows, you have who knows what, you got trees filtering it and all that stuff, but you have trees outside. But your light inside and outside are completely different animals. So if you have plants that are in a highlight setting, so if you have your cactus and your succulents that are in full sun right now, start transitioning them into lower light. So you, right now they're in full sun, put them in part sun for a few days or a week, put them in part shade for a few days to a week, then put them in shade, and then put them in the sunniest window of your house. Because the sunniest windows of your house is absolutely nothing like the sunniest outdoor space that you have. So I would say like a sunny window in your house is probably the equivalent of part shade or part sun outside. So just keep that in mind. Most of my plants are understory plants, so they're not used. Like most of them are part shade, I would say for the most part. So those, I'm just gonna go straight inside and I do have higher quality professional grow lights in my room and so those go under those and that's, I can adjust the, the light strength on those and honestly, I keep those at almost always at the lowest setting because these plants don't want a ton of sun. So that is really the key to having a successful 
houseplant transition is just try and have them go through as least of a transition of light as possible. It's more so than like temperature, humidity, all that. Yeah, that's important, but it's not as important as light. So a lot of people ask if they should use grow lights and the answer is yes. Like you really, really should. Even if you have, I would say if you have a Florida room or some sort of heated sunroom, then you probably don't need grow lights. But I live in an old Victorian house, which a lot of people do in Buffalo. And you're gonna really up your house plant game and you're really going to help your plants by giving them grow lights. You really, really are. Because we have really weak light between November and April. And while these plants grow in the tropics in weak light, they still need a little bit more light than we usually give them here. So I would say yes, grow lights are very beneficial. A lot of people ask me what kind of grow lights and it's really up to personal preference. I really don't like the pink lights or the colored lights because those distort the color on your house plants and they also really burn your eyes, I've noticed, and you don't want that, that's bad. So unless you're looking at your plants with the lights off for long periods of time, then inspecting them, because you can't really see the color changes, if you have a yellow leaf, you can't really see pests. So I really don't like those pink lights at all. Um, ones that we sell in the store are the Sun Blaster, which I really like. Um, there's a G&E one at home. Uh, I use Vivo Sun and Mars Hydro. And I think that's it. Those are the ones I use at home. Uh, we can do a more extensive video on grow lights and grow light setup if that's something that you're looking for. Just comment below and say yes. If you'd like to see more videos on grow lights and I'd be happy to help you out with that. And I don't want to get into watering and humidity because I want to do a whole separate video on winter plant care and this is already getting long enough so i really want to talk really quickly about pests so the number one question i received from people about bringing your plants in for windows like how do i not bring in bugs first of all i want to be clear that your house plant pests your standard pests those don't come from outside those are already present on your plants how often walking down the street or gardening do you see mealybugs spider mites or um, grips on your plants outside, never, never, never see those out there, or fungus nets, they're never in your garden, they're in your house plants. Uh, they do have scale aphids outside though. So your plants aren't getting those outside. You're not bringing them back in. If anything, you they had them when they were in your house, you brought them out, they were still there. Just outside, there's air, there's wind, there's predatory wasps, and bees and ants, ants eat other bugs, you know, there's stuff going on outside which aren't going on inside. So you're not necessarily bringing in pests from your plants that were outside. And I think it's important that we define what a pest is. So we know our mealybugs, spider mites, thrips, uh, scale, aphids, those are pests. Your ants, those aren't pests. Those are just making a home in your pot because it's a nice little cozy safe place for them to make a home. They're not actually feeding or doing anything to your plant. Your millipedes, those also aren't doing anything to your plant. They do eat some vegetative matter, but they're not really doing anything to harm your plant at all. If anything, they're doing your plant a favor by moving around the soil while they're looking to eat little things that are in there. So I don't worry about millipedes. Centipedes, if you don't want your centipedes, you can just give them to me because centipedes are some of the fiercest hunters out there and they will eat all of your pests that you do have. So I celebrate when I find centipedes. Similarly, I love my spiders. So I, um, occasionally I may evict a spider or two and I just brush them off, nothing crazy, um, when I'm bringing them inside. But honestly, I'm okay with those guys because they are gonna eat anything that I don't want and they're gonna eat anything you don't want. So make peace with your centipedes, your millipedes, your spiders, and your ants. And also, a lot of those bugs don't really want to be inside. They want to be outside. So a few times I have brought in some wolf spiders or some ants, and they come inside and they think it's horrible, and they just evict themselves. So I wouldn't really worry about those guys so much. And um, also, I'm a nature girl, so I'm okay with that. I understand there's people that aren't, but I would say just come to peace because they're doing you a favor when they're inside. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll do a whole separate video on winter plant care and how to take care of your plants in the winter. This was just your transition because people are all so worried about it and I just want you to just be calm. 
okay. My plants are still outside. Your plants should still be outside. And that's it. Thank you. I'll talk to you later.